I will start. So first of all, I will start with the introduction to introduce myself. My name is Victor. I work in data branch Eindhoven office. I'm a field application engineer. So I support PSCs, HMI, uh, inverter, and a lot of products, controls. So I'll be taking us through the training session today. And the session today is quite practical and very interesting. And uh, when you have questions during the section, so do not hesitate to ask your question. And we are also privileged to have my colleague here, Johan. So we'll be anchoring this session hey, as well. Yeah, welcome, Johan. So during the questions and answer section, it will be a very resource, resourceful uh, personnel for us as well. So when you have any question, don't hesitate to ask. So today we are looking at a very interesting friendly special function we have in our ASPLC, and that is Canopon Special Mode. So this Canopon Special Mode is, is a feature that we have to help you easily control your servo drive and inverter using Canopon. So if you are not an expert in Canopon communication protocol, choosing this function that we have in this ASPLC, you can easily control your drive, your inverters, using Canopon communication. And also our ASPRC is a perfect choice when it comes to machine automation. So for your machine automation need, and also of your customer, AS series PLC is the best choice you can make. And we have different series in this uh, PLC model. We have AS300, I think this is the picture you could see on the screen. And this one, you can use the Canopon, you insert the Canopon uh, communication card on slot two. And we also have AS200, it looks quite alike. And Canopon uh, communication protocol is built, the port, the internet, the uh, CAM port is built in the AS200 and also AS100 as well. So AS100 is not yet released, but is uh, in, in, is in uh, production. So as sooner than later, AS100 will also be available as well. So the system configuration, let's look at the system configuration. So like I told you that AS um, PLC is a perfect choice for system, for machine as, uh, automation. So when it comes to AS PLC, you can realize your motion need using that post train. I suppose you can see my pointer. I'm using a USB pointer. Hopefully it goes through the Zoom platform. So you can use post train to control your drive for the motion application of, of your need. And also you could also use Canopoon as well. And when you use Canopoon, that you have um, more flexibility because Canopon can control more slaves, more drives compared to when you use post train. But in this training, we are going to focus on Canopon. So with the Canopon special mode, you can control up to 16 slaves. And to be specific, maximum eight uh, server drive. Like for example, on this presentation, you can see ASDA A2M. So this Canopon special mode supports our, our server drive that is compatible with Canopon. So ASDA A2, ASDA B3, ASDA A3, and even the new server drive we are going to have that support Canopon. You can use this special Canopon mode to control maximum its server drive. And also in addition, you can control the inverter, maximum eight Canopon inverter. So in total, you can control 16 slave using this special canopy mode that this PLC offers. This is what I already explained in the previous slide. So for the, I did mention this earlier already as well, for the AS300 to use the canopy, this is the canopy card. Hopefully you can see my mouse with a laser pointer. So you, ins you install the canopy card on slot two. And when you have done that, this, you are ready to, to go. You are ready to control your drives, the slaves, using the Canopon uh, communication protocol. 
And for the AS200 and AS100 uh, PLC series, the can open port is built underneath the PLC. So if you turn the PLC, you see there's a can open port is embedded on the PLC itself. So what is the advantage of this special can open mode? It makes life so easy for all of us machine maker because you don't need to do any can open configuration. The traditional method of using can open to control the slaves, the drive, is to do a PDO mapping. You map the address of the slave to the master, the slave you want to control. But with this special can open mode, we are going to see shortly, demonstrate shortly, you don't need any special tools to configure the, the, the parameter. All you just need to do, once you enable that function, the drive is ready, your PS is ready to control your slave in a very simple way. Even though you don't even know the, the techniques, the principle of using Canopon, you can easily control Canopon drives, a Canopon drive using this uh, special Canopon mode function, communication function in the ASPLC. So let's look at the servo and AC drive configuration. So this session is quite very practical. So we'll not spend much time in uh, theory, like I've been telling you. So we are going to practicalize. And you really see how interesting this feature is. I don't believe some of us here, maybe we've already tried this um, function before. So for you, it's just like a redirection. And for you that have not tried this function before, so it's just an eye opener. So it tells you how easy it is for you to choose uh, the kind of special mode to control your server drive and AC drive. So I will switch my camera and I will switch my camera. I will show you the setup of our testing. So you see, I, I hope you can see my camera. Let me, I could spotlight it for you to see. Okay, I think maybe it's, it's, uh, it's, it's visible enough. Yeah, so what do we see in this video? So what we are seeing here, this is the configuration I have here. So this is the test setup we are going to use. Let me see if I can, if I can, yes, on my side, I've zoomed. It's quite bigger. I hope you can also see it bigger on your side. So what we have here, we have server drive. So the first uh, drive you see here, I don't, I'm not sure if you can see my mouse, is server drive. So the server drive has that B3. So it, it has a Canopon port embedded on this server drive. So the server drive is connected to the AS. What you could see there, I'm not sure you see my mouse moving, is the AS PLC. And to be specific, is AS200. So the AS200 is the master so it's the, it's the guy that does the communication controlling the slave. So the first slave we have is the server drive. You can see this digital display of the server drive. And then the Canopon network is extended to a Canopon communication card inserted in an MS-300. So MS-300 is an inverter. And then also on the MS-300, you can see a tiny cable here, the digital MI3. So there we, we enable a function called quick stop. We could use that function to quickly uh, disengage, disable the uh, inverter in the case of emergency. So this MI3 is connected to, is connected and shorted. So then the function is enabled. So if it's opened, then the server, this drive inverter should go, uh, should, should stop for emergency purpose. So this is the architecture, ACPLC, servo drive, canopy slave one, and the inverter slave two. And then you can see the motor. So when we begin to control these drives, we are going to see this uh, motor responding to the canopy command we are going to send to this drive from the PSC using this special fixture. So I hope you can see my, uh, my slide. So now we are going to start with the, with the setting right away. So now we're going to configure uh, the slaves so that we, we configure these two slaves. I mean, that's our drive. 
we configure the PLC and then we test this function for you to see how easy it is, how it makes um, making your machine very easy using Canopen communication. So let's start. So first of all, we are going to start with the configuration of the of the server drive. So what we are going to do, we are going to reset the server drive. So reset the server drive parameter 02, 008, we, we write into it, the drive will be reset. And once that is done, <coughs> we'll power off the server and then we'll power it on again. I will swap my screen. So I will be using um, TI Designer for this configuration. So for us, this is a very big milestone for us as data. I hope you can see my screen. So for us in data, in the past, we have each product has its own software. But now we are advancing. We are trying to compact our product into one software. So one of the software we have in our GIS Studio catalog is GI Designer. So GI Designer can configure server drive. So that in the, I don't need to open as that soft uh, theoretically. And it can configure the PLC, the AS200. You can see, hopefully you can see my mouse, AS200. And also server drive, I'm using MS300. So from this one software, I can configure all the devices that I have connected in this, that I have connected in this uh, setup. So let's start. First, I want to check if my server drive is connected to my uh, DIA designer, then I could from DIA designer reset the drive and then power on the drive like we already seen. So to do that, let me check my communication. If you could also say this is my um, device manager of my PC. So in my device manager, I have um, two COM USB cable connected. COM16 is for my uh, server drive, and COM11 is for my inverter VFD MS300. So what is going to happen now? I want to check for the server drive if I'm connected. So I, I expand. So this is an already existing project. Let me click communication settings. So I want to check the connection of my server drive with GI Designer if it's okay. So let me disconnect. So you can see it's COM16. Let me connect. Perfect. You can see that uh, my server drive now is connected to my dear designer. So then this is the parameter settings. To set the parameters, to configure the parameters, this is server setting. I open it. So once it opens, and then I can set the parameter, parameter editor. So you can see from the dear designer, I have launched. OK, there's a question. OK. Um, Yes, that's a very good question. If we could start it as a new project, uh, what would happen? Uh, the differences is not much if we start as a new project. What will happen is that we are going to share this project with you at the end of the training, and you will just follow. So as this is already a pre-made project, uh, it's just for a quick demo of um, these features, how efficient it is. So what we, the selling point here is that we are trying to tell our partners that to use Canopon with this special mode Canopon ASPSC is very easy. Even though you are a secondary school student and you have not been to university, you don't know what is called Canopon protocol, you don't know what is called ETCAT, you don't know what is called Profinet and those other industrial protocols. If you are taken to a tutorial for just a, a day, you can use this Canopon to start communicating with Canopon Drive. So the answer to, um, to that, pardon me, Let's use this to, to, for the training. And then we are going to like share it with you at the end of the training. And then you can also follow the sequentially how we made the project. So that's for that.
So what will happen now? Let me go to parameter editor. This parameter editor, I want to read to see if um, we are connected. So let me read the parameters from the server drive. You can see that I can read. So now I'm reading. So parameter file read is okay, perfect. So like, like what I we said, we said we are going to reset parameter 2008, we set it to 10, then it reset the drive to factory default. So what will happen is that we are going to do that right away. And then as we do that, try to see, look at the screen on my video, you can see the server drive, the first, you then try to see when I'm resetting, you see the screen, the digital display responded to the command. And then we can power off and power on again, as we already explained. So let's go to parameter two, you click here, parameter two. We set parameter two, zero, zero, eight. Parameter two, zero, zero, eight. So now you can see the value I have here is 36. So we want to write it as 10 to reset it. Also, try to observe the video if there's a response from the digital display. You can see it's busy, busy, done. Hopefully, I hope you saw that. So now it's 10. So we have successfully written. What I did, I wrote 10 on this um, parameter index. I just click enter. I could also double click and then also initiate the same stuff. But with the enter, the command has been sent to the drive. Now it has reset. So what I'm going to do now, I will power off the drive. I'll power it on again, just as we have in our, if you look at this video, okay, I remove the USB because the, my USB is supplying five volts. So you can see now the drive is off. You can see, then I plug my USB again. Let me power on the drive. Perfect. So you can see that I've successfully res reset the drive to factory default, and you can see that uh, alarm 13 is triggered, alarm 013. So what is the next step? We are going to set the control mode of the drive. That is parameter one. We are going to use P arrow mode. Parameter one, zero, zero, 001, we set it to one. So let's go to our our um, our parameter editor. So before I start writing, I want to read the parameter to make sure that though I'm off, you see I'm offline. Let me go online. I want to make sure that I'm connected. So let's see if we can read. So then, yeah, we can successfully it's reading. So we can read. Parameter read is okay. So now it means that I'm communicating. Uh, I can. Con uh, uh, my drive is reachable. Now let's look at the other step. Parameter one, zero, zero, one, let's set it as one. Okay. Parameter one, zero, zero, one, you can see it's zero. So I will set it as one, backspace, one, enter. So you can see I've written one to the drive. So what is the next step again? So now we are configuring the drive. And um, for some of us here, I believe most of us here, we are experts. So please do bear with us. And the way I'm proceeding, for you, it might be like, uh, it's like charge play because you already know all this. Uh, but we also have some, some of our, some persons that are connected. This is their first time of getting to know about server drives. So if we go at a very fast pace, they might get, get lost. So just be patient, it will not take so much. Uh, this training is very straightforward. Be patient with those that are, that are beginners so that they can follow the procedures. They can do it. Um, on their own when they get back to the factory. So the next parameter we're going to set, we're going to set the station, the canopy station address of the drive. So for this special function, 
uh, take note of this for this uh, special function. The station address of the eight servers drive slave must be from one to eight. So if you are using just one server drive, like we have in this setup, as you could see in the video, the first server drive is one. So you don't have to like, um, it, the function uh, stipulates that you have to follow this address sequentially. So if you have five server drive slave, you need to use from one to five. So that's why it's called special uh, canopy mode function. So when you do that, you can seamlessly control these devices. And later on, we are going to also see the, for the inverter as well. There's a specific station address for the inverter you have to start from. So let's go to parameter 0300. Let's set it as one. So let's go to our parameter editor, parameter editor, parameter three, zero, zero. You can see now it's seven F. Let's set the station ad canopy kind of station address to one. I press enter. Okay. I've successfully written one to the drive, the kind of station address. So what's the next step? So what I'm going to do now, we're going to set the baud rate. So the baud rate is the speed, communication speed. That's parameter 03001. So let's choose 500 uh, uh, kilobits per second as the baud rate. So for that, we write this value, 0203. Parameter three, let's go to our editor. Parameter three, zero one this is the board rate so you can see it's 203 by default so we can leave it uh, at that uh, to be very sure let's press enter okay so now we have this at the board rate then the next step is the digital function digital input functions you could see on the screen there is alarm so by default parameter 0 to 11 to parameter 0 to 13. By default, the, uh, the, the, the digital input is normally closed. So that is why you see alarm 13. If you can see the video, you see alarm 13 on the screen. So the, to disable that, we change this zero to one. So now if we change it to one, it means normally open. Now it's like the digital uh, uh, input is engaged. We have to disengage. So if we disengage by writing this, uh, by writing one, what is writing one here, writing one, what is going to happen? The alarm will be cleared. So let's go to parameter 0, 1, 1, up to 13. Parameter 0, 2, from 11 to 13. Then the alarm will be cleared. Parameter 2, 11. You can see, like what I was explaining, you can see there is zero here. So this zero, it means it's normally closed. So that means the digital input is engaged. That's why you see the alarm. Then I will set this to one. So now we have disengaged digital inputs. It's not normally open. And then for the other one, 12, parameter 12, let's also set this as well to, to one. One, this, uh, let me make sure I have written, enter, enter. And the last one, 13. So just watch the screen of uh, the digital display of the drive. You see the error will, will, clear, will be cleared after I have written this value. You see, it is cleared. Now you can see 0, 0, 0, 0. So the alarm that was there is all gone. Perfect. So now we are almost done with configuring the server drive. So it's as easy as this. So what the last step, we need to power off the server drive, then we'll power it on again. So let me remove my USB, my USB supply five volts so that I don't want it to have any power at all. Uh, let's power off the drive. You can see the LED is gone. A few seconds. Then I power on the drive. So let me put my USB cable again. Perfect. So now, the server drive is ready to receive motion command from the ASPRC. That is all you have to do. It's as simple as this. Let's go to the next step. To the next step now, I'm going to configure this other slave. That is the inverter. So for the inverter, 
First of all, let's also reset the parameter of the inverter. To do that, we'll go to parameter 0, 0, 0, 2. We set it to 9. So it resets all the parameters to factory default setting. So let's go to our editor. So I will open my DR Designer. So mind you, it's from DR Designer that I launch all the parameter editor. So in other words, all the parameter editors of the server drive and the inverter is embedded in DR Designer. So I'm using one software to control all my, all my devices. I, I'm not using uh, several software, just the DR Designer I need to uh, you know, launch. So now go, let's go to the inverter. This is my DR Designer. So I want to check if it's connected. Let's go to communication settings. So my communication setting will open up. Once it opens up, I'm going to check the connection again if I'm connected. Yes, so I've launched. You can see now it's disconnected. This uh, uh, cancel signal, it means I'm not connected. My port of the uh, inverter is COM port 11, so it's, it's, it's correct. I want to connect. So if the connection is successful, you should see this blue, uh, it will change to good symbol, symbol. This cancel it will change to good symbol. Perfect. So I'm connected now to my, to my inverter. Let's close this connection, uh, communication set, uh, setting page. Now, if you come to the VFD function, this is the uh, designer. Then you come to parameter settings. Let me, let me close it. So this is my drive, there's internal PLC. I don't need that for this training. I'm going to the VFD function of the drive. I expand it. I come to hardware configuration. If I expand it, there's configuration. I come to parameter settings. In parameter settings, you can see this is drive one. It has already opened the parameter setting page um, for us. So now I'm going to parameter 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2. See parameter reset. We have to set it to nine. So let me see. Let me set it to zero first, then I set it to nine. Let's see if the value is written. So I want to download this download button, download the parameter. You can see it's written. You can see here yeah, the actual value now is zero, but what I actually need is nine. So let me, let's let just write nine to reset nine. nine then let's download so you can download each parameter you can download all parameters so the designer has come to make configuring your machine very easy so let's download this parameter now so you should see actual value change to nine perfect change to nine so according to our instruction we are following now we have to reset the drive so i need to power it off so if you watch the video you see the inverter display should go off. Let me turn it off for the reset to take place. You can see the, the display, digital display of the inverter is off. Now I turn it on and we have successfully reset the drive. So we'll go to the next step. The next step now we're going to set the communication protocol. So let us set the source of frequency and also the source uh, can open as frequency source. We also set can open as command source. So we we'll do that with this parameter 020, 021. So let's set 020 to 6 and we set 021 to 3. So let's go. Parameter 00, index 20. Let's set it to 6. Six, enter. So it's that we're rating. 21, 0, 21. Let's set it to three. I have three here. Let me download. I'll download. I don't know if you can see my the display. Let me check on the display those parameter. Parameter 0, 0, 20. Parameter zero zero zero. Let's go to zero zero. 
let's go to 20. So I should have six here. Perfect, six. If I go to 21, I should have three. Perfect. So that's okay. So what's the next step? The next step, we have to set uh, the digital input of the drive, MI3 as quick stop. To do that, we go to parameter 02, 03, we set it as 53. So I've connected a cable on this terminal and I shorted the cable. So it's to help us for the quick stop of the drive in case of emergency. So parameter 02, 03, let's make it 53. 02, 03, parameter 2, 0, 2, 0, 3, digital input 3, 5, 3. Let's, 5, 3 is there. Okay, before I write this 5, 3, let us already see what is parameter 0, 2, 0, 3. Enter parameter 0, 2, 0, 3. You see, it's 1. Because after we reset the drive, it becomes 1. Because it's an already open project, that's why you're saying 5.3. So now I need to write this 5.3. If I write, let's download the parameter. So it should 5.3. Now if I look at this now, it should be 5.3. Enter 5.3, perfect. So you see, we've successfully set MI3 for quick stop. And then we set the next parameter. So we are almost, we are, we are, we are going at a fast pace before you know. <laughs> We are going to start controlling these slaves, like uh, you know, uh, like as you would think. So we are done with that. Now we are going to set the many parameter communication parameter, parameter zero nine thirty six. This is where we set the station address, Kanopu station address. So for this special Kanopu mode, just like we saw with a, a servo drive for inverter, the station address must start from twenty one. So it's a, you know, it's a special function. It is built in the firmware of these uh, products. You have to start the station address, kind of position address from 21. Since I have just one drive in this setup, as you could see in the video, I only have 21. So parameter 0936, we set it as 21. 0937, we set it at, as a one. That is kind of board rate, the speed. Let's do those two, 0936, 20, we set it 21, 0937, we set it as one. Let's go. We are designer 09, 0936, scroll down. So we are going to share this project with you at the end of the training, and you can play with it. So 0936, Station address 21. Let's write it. If I check it now, it should be a different value. But I'm going to write this. So I've downloaded the parameter. 37 should be 1. 1, write 1. I download the parameter. So I've downloaded the parameter. So I'm sure that the parameter now is written to the drive. Then we are going to parameter 0940. Let's see what that is. 0940 is the communication decoding method. So we are using DS42, and then we set this parameter to one. 40, let's write one. Download parameter, I've downloaded. So if you check now, it should be one. And then what are the other par parameter we need to set? Yes, parameter 1133, canopy as stock mode. So if the drive supports stock mode, if you set this parameter, and then you can make the drive to operate in stock mode. So let's just do it. We are not going to test this for this training. We are going to test the rest motion possible possi uh, possible motion that you can realize with this kind of special mode function. But we are not going to test stock. Let's set parameter eleven thirty three to three. Parameter eleven. You have it here. 1133, three. parameter 1133 three to 3. I have 3 here. Let me write 3, download. Perfect. So now we are almost through with uh, the setup. 
So that is it. So we have configured the two slaves, the inverter we are done. It's as simple as this. And you could also set the parameter just using the buttons on the drive. But I've done this using GI Designer because it makes life easy. With one software, I'm controlling all the devices that I'm using for this very machine. So what is the next step? The master, the PLC configuration. This is very easy. You just have to do two things and you are done. To start controlling the drive, we are going to control the drive shortly. So what do we do here? If you come to DI Designer, we are going to set just two parameter. Can open port work mode, we select it as data special driver and AS. That's what we need to set. And then we set the board rate. So the board rate of um, the board rate, can open board rate of the PSC, which is the master as 500K. So let's go to that. So now let me close this tree of the drive. We are through with the setting of the drive. Let me close the tree of the server drive. I'm done with the parameter setting. Now let's expand the PSC. So the PSC, so let me check the communication setting if I'm connected. So what I did, I used Ethernet to connect. Let me disconnect, let me connect again. Perfect, so I'm connected to my PLC with Ethernet. This is the IP address of the PLC. So now we are going to set the parameter. What you do, come to hardware configuration. Let me close all these that are expanded so that we could get it. So now come to hardware configuration, expand it. Then you have parameter setting. If you go to parameter setting, it opens up the page of that screen you saw in the PowerPoint. Let's open this. So we are there. There we want to set the built-in can open port. So because AS200, my PSC, has built-in can open port. So we change just two things. If you can open work mode, you can see data special driver and AS remote mode. So can open special mode. I select this, it's ready. When I'm downloading, it should be downloaded. And then the board rate, I set it at 500K. So this is ready, sorry, 500K. At the time we are downloading, it should be downloaded. So now we are going to download uh, this parameter. So I click my download. Let me compile first. Let's compile. So we are done with the setting. The next step we are going to now is just to test and see how uh, easy it is to make your machine with this function. Let me download PC to device. So I will download the PSC parameter. I will not download. Uh, so this is download manager. It's possible to download everything in one go. So I don't want to download um, like the drive. I don't want to download the drive. For the server drive, I don't want to download. So I want to only download the PSC. So the object code, all we have configured. So now if I click start transmission, the configuration should be downloaded to the um, PSC. So let's try it. It's, it's downloading. So if everything goes well, you should change to success. That means we have successfully down downloaded our configuration. Success, you can see, is downloaded successfully. Good, now we are good to go. So this is the main part, you know, just like in coding. Uh, in machine making, coding is the last thing to be made. What the machine builder will do, they will first of all plan the architecture, plan the algorithm, and the last thing is the coding. And you can do the coding just in, in one week. In, uh, and you can do the planning, the architecture in three months. So we have done the main thing to not control the drive. It's just a piece of cake. It's not difficult. So now, what makes this special kind of mode, uh, uh, how will I say, uh, welcoming? What make, make, makes it uh, very interesting? So what makes it interesting is that you can easily control your drive, your machine, using special application instruction APIs. So now I'm going to demonstrate. Just to be sure, let me check uh, my board rate for, for the inverter. 
parameter 0937, if it's 500k, if it's one. You can see this video, uh, the camera parameter 09. I just want to be sure. 937 uh, should be one. For servo drive, I remember what that was. That one is, is correct. For this, I'm just skeptical. Perfect. So it's correct. All settings should be okay. Good. Now let's proceed. Sorry for going back. I just want to be sure our configuration was okay. Now we have come to the business of the day. So this is the climax of this training. It's at this section we'll be rounding up soon. And if you have questions, we are here to answer your question. Um, luckily, my colleague Johan is also on the platform to support us with questions regarding this function. So now what makes it easy? What makes it, what makes it easy for you to use this uh, special canopy mode is the application instructions that you can easily use to control your drive. So there's no limit to which height you can control your drive. So anything you want your drive to do with this API, this command, you can ask your drives, they begin to do it. And those drives, you can use it for different type of machine packaging machine, milling machine, printing machine, depends on what uh, the motion movement you are making, what you want to do in your machine. So the first steps, this is quite um, important. The first step to start controlling this drive, this slave, is to use this API, we call it init C, initialize canopy communication. So once you initialize, if you, if you, um, if you execute this API, it will initialize the server drive and the inverter for canopy communication. It means like it's sort of unchecking. The drive says, oh, I'm ready to receive command from the master. And the master knows, oh, my slave is there. I'm ready to command my slave. So that's the first step. You, you execute this, initialize the communication. And once you have done that, Synchronously, what you could do also, we are going to the program shortly. This is what you are going to see. So we put this video here because we are going to share this um, slide with you also. You can watch this video. This is a video. You can watch this video um, when you get back to the factory. That's why we put it here. So after we have init, then initialize the communication. The next thing you have to do, you use this API as that on to enable the drives. So you can see S2, the operand S2, that is where what you write on this depends, determine what you are asking the drive to do. For servo drive, if you write zero, the servo drive is disabled. But if you write one, the servo drive is on. For the inverter, if you write one, zero is disabled. If you write one, speed mode is enabled. If you write to, you enable TOG mode, if the drive supports TOG mode. And mind you, the S1, operand S1, is for the station address. So once you put the station address of these slaves on this operand, the, the command goes to that very uh, slave that has the station address on this API. And then once the, 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 the drives, they are enabled. So there's a, a feedback flag that tells you that, oh, yes, this drive has been enabled. So for servo drive, we have this feedback flag for the eight sl slaves, if you have up to eight slaves. So when it's on, the flag turns on. And for the inverter, if the inverter is enabled, this flag, they turns on. So it gives you a feedback that, yes, my drive is ready. So now let's demonstrate these two steps, initialize communication and also enable the drive. Let's go to our program. So well, let's come to the designer. Now we are through with the configuration. Now let me close the tree of configuration, programming, and then the main, let's go to the main. So this already made program, we pre made this program already. So we are going to share this uh, program with you at the end of this training. Uh, you can go through it sequentially to see uh, what it offers. So step zero. So this program is like a state machine. So from one state, from state zero, we move to state one. From state one, we move to state two and just 
we go like a state machine sequentially. So this is the first step, step zero. We are waiting for the initialization of the communication. So once we initialize, when we once we once we trigger this uh, contactor here, so the init is triggered. So initialize. This is the uh, station address. That is for server drive one. So it initialize the server drive, and if that is successful, the the register you can see the register for the server drive. We we there was this flag will be on, telling us that yes. Uh, I'm ready for communication uh, via Canopy. The same apply, the same init for the inverter. This is the flag. It, it applies. So when they are both initialized, we now move to the next step. So the next step, uh, that is where we are going to use the ASDA on. You can see I already showed to us to enable. This is this, uh, the station address of the server drive, station address of the inverter. So now we are going to go online. I already have this program in the PFC to so initialize this drive and also turn them on, enable them. Let's go online, dear designer. Online. Now it's, my PS is already running. It's run. You can see we don't have any errors. So it seems our configuration is quite okay. So now let's enable, let's trigger the init if it's true. So you watch this register when the communication is ready, the register turns on. True. Perfect. You can see for both drive, they are both initialized for canopy communication. And then our state machine has moved to state one. And state one, you can see this state one. This is where we enable the drive. So you can see I have a contactor here to enable both drive. This one will enable the station address one, that is server drive, and station address 21, that is our inverter. Now, if you see the shaft, if you look at the video, the shaft of my, of my server drive is still very uh, flexible. I can move it with my hand. So at the moment I enable the, the server drive, the shaft becomes stiff. I cannot move it anymore. So let's enable the server drive. True. Okay, let's see. Perfect. You can see the shaft is stiff. I cannot move the shaft. Server drive is enabled. You can see it's as easy as ABC. So you don't need any special degree. You don't need to make your machine to start running via canopy with this special mode. Now it's enabled. So now let's enable the inverter as well. True. Yeah, the inverter is enabled. You can see the register, um, the flag, the feedback that both are enabled is here. So this is the step one. We initialize the communication. Now we have enabled the drive. So the drive is ready to receive your motion command. And let's go to back to our presentation. What else do we have to do again? The next thing we have to do now that the drives, they are on, we need to set the RAMs. So we use this API, uh, CASD, to set the RAM, the acceleration time and the deceleration time. And then once the, the, this, the, this flag that we saw before, before so it, it's also when uh, we set the RAM, this flag should also give us a feedback that okay the command we have set uh, to the drive is, is there look at the command all i'm saying this so initialize for communication so it means they are ready to communicate so what is going to happen now this is step two so from step one we have moved to step two so step two this is where the um we set the ramps, so the ramp has been set now. And what we also did here is we, we set the homing. So we want to uh, perform homing on the server drive. So, and the kind of homing that we choose is mode four. That is homing on Z signal of motor encoder, home four. So when that is ready, it's ready, home four is ready, then we have come to uh, step two. Let's go back to our presentation. 
So now the RAMS is set. What is the RAM value in our program? The RAMS is uh, for the server drive, 100, 100, 100 acceleration, acceleration. For the inverter, you have 2,000, uh, 2,000 acceleration and acceleration. So, and then for the uh, homing method, we have choose mode four. And then the drive is ready uh, to use mode four method for the homing. So let's go back to the presentation. So now we are going to do uh, the OMI. We have already used OMI mode as mode four. So this is a video like I told you. So this is the OMI command. So when this, this is triggered, it will move our drive to home. So once the OMI is complete, this flag will be triggered that the OMI is complete. So why is it important to uh, home your drive? So it's important in your application because home, if you home your drive, it takes your drive to a reference point. So your drive goes to position zero once the homing is successful. And then from that reference point, you can move to any place uh, on your machine. Maybe you are using, you have a pick and place machine, you have a cutting machine. From the home, you can calculate the distance of the cutting. And from there, you know how far you need to move your drive to do the cutting. Uh, or maybe you are doing a pick and place unit, you know how far you need to move your drive to pick the, the item you want to pick. So the homing is very important. Move your server drive to the reference point. So let's perform the homing. So check, can you see my, if you check the video, you can see that the data logo is nowhere positioned, it's, on, it's vertical. So after I've done the homing, the data logo should be well positioned such that you can read it uh, correctly. Let's see if that happens. Let's perform the OMI. You can see there was a rotation. You can see the data logo now is, you can read it uh, normally. Now my drive is, is, is home. So, and that is position zero. So from this reference point zero, you can move your drive to any displacement depending on the kind of machine you are making. So that is the, uh, the, the first phase. And now we come to the, uh, to the, let me say the climax of this testing. And then we'll give time for question and answer. So that is step three. You can see that when the homing is complete successfully, we move our sequence to step three. Now we are step three. So what happens in step three? In step three, this is where we demonstrate the motion that you can make with this uh, special canopy mode. So one of the motion possibility is incremental position, incremental movement. So you move your drive incrementally to a position of your choice. For example, maybe your pick and place unit is uh, to its 100,000 uh, meters, meter or millimeter displacement. If you specify that to the displacement on S2, where you want to move to, and then you specify the speed, the ROPM, the target speed to move there. So it moves there. When it gets there, it cuts. If it's a cutting application, if it's a pick and place unit, it picks what you are picking. So this is incremental positioning. So this is one of the position you can uh, implement. So let's test it. Let's see how it works. This is one incremental position. And you use this API, DDROV incremental. So your drive received the command and increment the displacement or the position that you specify. So this is for the server drive. So this is this instruction I just told you, DDROVIC. So now we are going to move increment. Now you, this is the position of my drive. My drive, the shaft, if you see the video is in z position zero. Now I want to move the drive to position uh, 100, um, thousand, and this is the speed it will take to move the 60 ROPM. So what happens is that if I trigger this uh, switch, what will happen, this drive, the shaft will rotate, and then the value in my position from the home, it will move to 100,000. 100,000, uh, depend, depend on what, uh, 100,000 millimeter, 100,000, it moved to 100,000. So that is the position in, in the, in, 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 I would like to say in the displacement table. So depend on what you want in the distance. So it moved to that very position. And then you see here, 
the feedback, the current position will be 100,000. So let us try. I want to turn it on. Watch the shaft, the video. You will see it will rotate slightly to position 100,000. You can see it's moving. It has gotten there. And you see this flag is a feed, feedback flag. The flag tells us that the motion command, the movement, incremental movement command has been initiated, is completed. And you can see this is the current position of my shaft is 100,000. So what will happen if I trigger this again? Can somebody tell me what will happen? Since I'm moving incremental, if I trigger this command again, what is going to happen to the current position of the drive? Can somebody, you can type, if you cannot talk, you can type it. And when you type it, I will, we'll see your response or you can talk. Just tell me what will be the next position I'm moving to. Incremental. Okay, yeah, somebody is asking for the PPT and the test project after the webinar. Yes, we are going to share it with you. Thank you, my colleague has already answered. So you, I ask a question to Ross. If you cannot talk, you can type the answer to me. Let me see. Uh, uh, let's just think theoretically. So now I've moved incremental. This is incremental movement. What we, if I trigger this command again, what would be the position of the drive? What, which position will I move to incrementally? Any feedback? Answer. Oh, perfect. So we got a question and answer from one of our colleagues. It will increment 100,000. Perfect. That is the absolute answer. So if I trigger this command again, this, my drive will displace 100,000 more to move 100,000 more. Then the current position is going to be 200,000. So just watch this. What will happen here? And you watch the shaft. It's going to move. Thank you for the answer. True. A trigger. You see the drive is moving. Now it has stopped. Position 200,000. So it's incremental. So depending on the machine you are making that requires incremental movement, you can use this API. So you increment to the position of action of the machine. Depends on what you want the machine to do. Maybe you move to position 200 and cut. When it gets there, you implement the, the machine start cutting. Move to 200 and pick and place. It pick, it place. So this is incremental movement. So this is one of the motion command, one of the move, movement you can make uh, when you are using Canopon in our ASPSC, especially with this Canopon special mode that makes controlling your drive with Canopon very easy. So you don't need to be an expert, you don't need to be a guru to use Canopon to move your drive if you use this special mode. So we have executed the first um, motion possibility, which is incremental movement. And let's go back to our presentation. Uh, Victor, sorry. Yeah. I think one of the attendees has uh, raised his hand. Oh, okay, please go ahead. Could you ask your question? Hi, Fabi. Yeah, okay. What will happen? Uh, you can tap your question or you can talk if it's possible that you can talk. You're, you're mute, eh? Fede, in case you're trying to explain it, you're mute. Myself? Can you hear me, Joan? Yes, Hello. I can hear you, but I cannot Hello. hear Fede. Okay, good. Continue. Ask your question. Okay, uh, I was asking about uh, your homing method. What is yes. the origin? What was the origin? To the origin, right? Right. Yes, if you home, it goes to the origin. Okay, but what, what is the, uh, the origin you selected before? Homing okay. The homing the for example, yeah. if uh, okay, continue. I have a lot of echo. I don't know if you got the, the question, Victor. No, I don't get it completely. Let me mute my mic. Maybe I, I don't know where the echo is from. Please, could you repeat your question?
by by question. Okay, I'm asking about uh, the 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 roaming method you selected. What was the roaming method? Okay, I select a uh, mode four. That mode four of the homing is just to to home the drive, to move the drive to the uh, to the Z signal position. Look at the homing where where it triggered the homing. Homing mode four. four. So, you said encoder signal. Yes, exactly. So homing on Z signal of motor encoder. It's based on encoder signal, but okay. yeah. Uh, Joanne, could you throw more light on that? Yeah, yeah. It's Maybe right. if, yeah. If, you, if you move to the presentation, you have a table with the different uh, homing method we have available on uh, on our servo drives. Here, I'm not sure if it's maybe too small to, to see it clearly. I don't know. Maybe you can do a zoom, Victor, or no? It's not possible, maybe. Ah, good. So we are doing the home method number four, as you see here. It's coming in the forward direction and look for the seat pulls and regard it as the original point, so it's homing. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah, so the essence of homing is just to move your drive to a reference section where from that reference point, you can uh, command the drive. And the type of application you, you are making could influence the choice of the homing method that you choose. So that's a good question. Thank you for that question. And then let's uh, continue with the testing. So now we have already done the move incrementer so with this move incrementer you move the drive to the position you have specified it, it always increment whenever you trigger the incrementer command the next motion movement you can make is absolute positioning absolute movement and this is the instruction dd arrow v absolute and when the absolute motion is completed this flag also gives you a feedback that the absolute movement has been initiated. So if we, if we come to our software, let's test. So we already tested the, we have tested the move incrementer. Now let's test the move absolute, this um, API, absolute movement. So what happens is this, we are moving the, this is the station address, server drive. We are moving the server drive to absolute position, uh, to 200,000, and this is the speed, the RPM, 600 uh, RPM to move to this positioning. So what will happen, you see I already have 200,000. So let me move as incremental from this position so that if we trigger this command, we can see uh, what happens. So I want to move incremental from this position. It, I should, it should be 300,000. Let me move it once more again. You can see the shaft of my drive. It should be rotating. Now I'm positioned 400,000. Perfect. So now let's try to move absolute. So then what will happen? This, it should move my drive to the absolute position 200,000. So the current position of my drive is going to be 200,000. So if you watch this value, it will change to 200,000. So let's trigger this API through. The shaft is moving. You see now it's 200,000. So it's absolute, absolute. So what happens is that if I trigger this, um, if I trigger this command again, true, you see nothing happens because it's already in the absolute position. So it will never move because it has gotten to that position that I want. So that is different. Incrementer will always move to increment to a new position uh, that you have specified. But the absolute, when it is absolute, it means this is the position that is absolute. It will not move anymore. So what will happen now, you can see I'm in position 200,000. I want to move to position zero. Let's move absolute 
to position zero with higher speed so it goes much faster to this uh position zero so you see the position of my drive now should change to zero if i trigger this move absolute to zero move drive one server drive one station address one with this speed 1200 rpm to position zero let's trigger that let's see what happens watch my drive you will see the shaft of my drive and also watch the position on the screen where it goes to at the end it should be zero let's trigger it's very fast because it was a very high speed now you see i'm um, absolute zero position so that is those are the we have tested two possibility incremental movement absolute movement and now let's go to the our our slide let's test the other one so the type of movement you use depending on the type of machine you are making yeah, depend on what your machine is doing so depend on your machine you you may need absolute movement or you may need a um, uh, incremental movement so the other one we're going to try is the speed movement speed movement let's try that so now we are here speed movement is d p l s velocity speed movement so what are going to happen now is that i'm going to move my server drive with this speed rpm 1500 rpm so if i trigger this command you should see this drive rotating in this speed continuously so it will never stop so if it, if, it, if it goes to home it starts again it keeps on in a in a loop at this speed so let's see how that happens. Watch my uh, my my drive is going to be running. If you can check the position, let me see. Okay, you can see the position is here. The now is position zero. So I want to trigger the speed movement. True, you see. If you can see from the video, the is running. You can see the, my position is changing. So it keeps on moving. So it's like a circle. Once the circumference of the motion is completed, it starts again from zero. So it's a continuous movement. That is speed movement, speed. So now we have seen three possibility. Move incremental, move absolute, and speed movement. Perfect, you see it's running. I, what is the position? It, it keeps on, keeps on. So once it has completed the possible position, it starts again from zero. So it's just a speed application. Uh, your machine, your factory might need this kind of movement to continually move to turn something until you receive the stop command. So you could use this uh, move, uh, speed movement to control your machine. Now let's try to rotate with the same speed but the opposite direction now i'm going to trigger this let's stop you see i stop the driver has stopped moving now i want to go to the other the opposite direction but the same speed movement then but then to rotate uh negative to the opposite direction of the rotation let's trigger true you see the same speed it keeps on moving Perfect. So that's servo drive. So let's leave the servo drive running. Uh, let's go and choose the. Let's stop first. Let's go and choose choose the slow speed. Okay, it's one five. Okay, I will trigger this again. But then let's test the inverter. So the inverter, like you saw in our uh, when we were. Uh, when I was set, doing the setup, there's only two uh, motion you can make, two possible mode you can use for this. If, you, if I go back, it's either speed mode or tug mode if you drive support tug, you see? Uh, look, look at it. When you enable, enable as that on, you see? If it's one, which is we have selected speed mode. So the driver runs in speed mode. It drives support tug and you enable tug mode so it should run in tug mode. 
So for the inverter, the possible motion is only speed mode uh, for, for now. Maybe in the future, it may be possible to do all that precision movement like you have in the servo. But for now, you can only implement the velocity movement, the speed. So let's go to that. For the Let's test for the inverter. So if everything is okay, we should see our inverter running. So now the, the station address is 21. You see, it's the same thing we use for the servo drive, DP, LSVC, velocity movement, speed movement. This is for the station address of the inverter. So let's trigger this. You should see my inverter. It should be running using this uh, hard OPM that is stipulated here. True. Perfect. You can see in the video, the, the inverter is running. So then let me run the opposite direction. I stop. I run in the opposite direction. You see, it's the opposite direction. So let me trigger the servo drive to run speed mode as well. You watch my servo drive, should be running. So it's as easy as this. So if you have 16 drives in your machine, just with this simple instruction, you can command the movement of those slaves. Do you want to move incremental? They will respond to the command. Do you want to move absolute? They will respond to the command. Do you want speed movement? So whatever command is coming from the master using this API, your drive will start running. So you see, using Canopus Special Mode is ABC. Uh, it's a piece of cake. It makes controlling your machine with Canopus very, very easy. So we are going to go to question and answer section shortly. But before then, let me just run through a few other points that is important. Uh, the drive is making noise. Let us stop it uh, first uh, so that they will not make noise. Stop. Inverter is still running. Stop. Perfect. You see, it's, it's as easy as this. You can connect this switch to your HMI. You can connect it to your SCADA. If you click the button, your drive does what you want to do. So it's as simple as that. Let's go to yes. So another advantage of this kind of special mode, it gives you the possibility to send command to parameter register. So this, now we are through with the motion movement. So this is a add up. What can you do more with Canopon? Uh, when you use Canopon special mode, if you use this API, this is called Canopon parameter read write. So with this API, you can read write parameter registers. So no matter what is parameter registers that you have in your drive, if it's not, if it's a read only, you can only read. If it's a read and write register, you can read and write the register. And this API application instruction applies both to server drive, applies both to your inverter. So how does it work? It's very simple. This is the operand of this uh, API. You have S1, S2, S3, S4, S5. You can see it. S2 is request code. It's just like the function code if you are using a mode bus communication. So request code means what do you want to write to your slave? If you write hexadecimal 23, it means you want to write four byte data to the slave. If you write uh, uh, 2B in the request code, hexadecimal 2B in the request code, it means you want to write two uh, data bytes to your slave. If you write to F, it means, so this is just the function code is kind of, what, is it, what are you sending to the drive? And then to read, if you use hexadecimal 40, then with this API, you can read the specify uh, parameter group you want to uh, read. And then let's come to this index, this index, uh, index and sub index. This index, this is the parameter register is pointed to the parameter register you want to write. We are going to see shortly in our demo. So how do you reference the parameter you want to write or you want to read to in this operand? So this is how it works here. You see this X3 is um, 
illustrated here, P, A, B, C. So the right parameter register always starts from two. So two is, is constant, two would always be there. Then A is the parameter group, parameter group. So for example, when we are setting the communication, we went uh, of, uh, pardon me to switch back to the setting. You see, when we are setting the kernel pump for the inverter, we went in parameter group nine, and then we'll index 37 to set the baud rate. So if you want to use that kernel pump read right, you specify the parameter group, and you specify the index you want to write. Let's go and see from that illustration how you interpret that. So A is parameter uh, group. So in our case, we are just showed to you is group nine. So if, if I was going to write that with this uh, API, there should be nine. And then BC, that was 36 or 37. So BC is the index. So what happens is that for you to have the correct um, index register to specify, you need to convert the BC to hexadecimal format. So it's in decimal, you convert it to hexadecimal format. Let's see, test it on our project and see how it, it works. So now if you come to this step three, so we want to, now we are in step three, we want to write parameter one, zero, eight, eight. We want to use this API. So parameter one, zero, eight, eight. So this is parameter group one. So it means that this is a sub index. Two is always there. So this one would always remain. You see, this is sub index. It is uh, one, two, one. So this one is a parameter group. In the configuration we made earlier for the, for the settings, if I was writing the communication parameter, this one would be nine. But in this example, we want to write parameter one. So that is why this one must be one. Two is constant for all. That is where the um, parameter registers starts from, from 2000. And then this 5.8, how do I get this 5.8? So to get this 5.8, this 88 is in decimal. I convert this 88 to hexadecimal, to be 58. The way I normally do that, a calculator. I can use my calculator. If you open your calculator, you can, sh on your PC, you can select programmer. If you select, let me clear everything I have here. Programmer. And I have decimal 88. I click, double click decimal. So if I write 88, in hexadecima, I will get the equivalent of that 88. And you'll see it's going to be 58. So let's try decima 88. You see, I have 58. So this is how to convert it. So what happens? You write two, two is always constant, be one. Is it parameter nine, group nine? It will be nine. But now in this case, parameter one, we put one. And then this index, the real parameter you want to write, and this parameter is tug on me level reach timer in server drive is 88. So I convert this 88 to hexadecimal. That's why I have 58 here. So with this API, what am I doing? I'm using 2B. Like you saw, 2B is two byte. This H2, this is the request code. It's like the function code. 2B, I want to write two byte to this index, to this parameter. And then this is the sub index. So this parameter is just one parameter. It doesn't have sub index. So this is always zero. If you use this API, it's always zero. Then you write the param to parameter register. So now what are we going to do here? I want to write this seven seven to this parameter one, uh, parameter one eighty eight in the drive. So let's see. Why is this 77? You may, you may ask. When we initialized this project, we wrote 77 at the beginning. This is network 8. We are, we will, we will, be, will be true in f seven minutes. We're true with the, everything. Then you can ask your question. So you see, when we started the program, we initialized the program. And then I said, I sent, we sent 77 to this uh, variable. That is why you see 77 in network 8. Let's go to network eight. I'm there. So that's why you see the seven seven. So we could change later. 
Then, I don't know if you can see my display. The display, let me go to this parameter 188. Let's see what's the value that is there before we trigger this command. Let's go to mode, parameter 1, see now group 1, index 88. I want to write parameter 88, so I'm moving. So now I want to check if you, I don't know if you can see my screen, maybe it's so small. Let's check. Good. So now in this, oh, in this parameter, no, I shifted. I think let's go back. Parameter one, 88. We can also read it with their designer, uh, but let's read it with this one first. Maybe before we close, we can check what's the value in their designer. But let me go to parameter 88. So now I'm um, almost there, 88, perfect. If you could see, maybe the video is so small, you could see 88, probably. Parameter 180, let's see what is inside. I press set. So I have 2,000 inside, perfect. I have 2,000 now. I want to write, I want to write, uh, I'm going to write 77 to this parameter with this API. Let's trigger it, let's see what happens. Now if I check this later, you're going to see it's going to be, uh, let's write 11111, no, 777. Let me trigger true. So now I, I write, in what I'm doing on this network, I write and read. So now let me go to this parameter again, mode, parameter 188, enter. You see, I have 777, perfect. So let me change this to something different. Let me say uh, four, 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 I press enter, four, 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 sorry, four, 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 enter. So now it's four, 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 enter. I want to trigger it. I want to write it to the drive, true. You see, I will read it, four, four, four. And let me check the drive mode is 188. Set, you see it's 444. And the same thing also, if our parameter editor is connected, the same should also apply. If I read the parameter, I go online, you should see 444, parameter 188. If you scroll down to 88, in this 88, uh, 88 is down below. Parameter 1. 88. So uh, let me let us read. If we read the drive parameter, it should be should give us 444. Parameter read is okay. Parameter one. Let's go back again. 88. What do we have? Perfect. We have 444. You see how easy it is to send command to your uh, parameter register using this API. Uh, can open uh, read write. So let's go. So that, that's what we have just initiated. Uh, once the can open can, once the parameter register can be read, you can use this API to read it. If it can be written, you can use this API to write it. So this is how easy it is. So you don't you don't need to know uh, can open. You don't need to be a can open specialist to send can open command. Just execute this API. Your slaves, your drive will receive the command right away. So that's for that. Uh, let's check our presentation. Okay, good. So another one again, we are not going to test this. This is similar. What happens is that with this, you can write groups of data. The first one which we saw, you only can write one parameter register. But with this, you can write group parameter register. So if you use this API, Corp WL, you can specify multiple parameter you want to write. Then the support 16 bit is for 32 bits. Good. Last but not the least is the NMT uh, protocol, slave service uh, protocol. So with this, uh, this protocol, you can send some specific message to your slaves, to your drive, to manage the network. So one of the messages you can set is the reset. You can send the reset 
message. So if you send this request message with this API, then it goes to the slave. So and then also, um, that's for that. Uh, what will happen to test this? I will not test this. Uh, that will just explain to you how it will work. For example, if I remove the Canopon cable, you can see my drive. If I remove the Canopon cable from the from from this network, if I remove the Canopon cable, there's going to be an error. So when the error is triggered, if you want us to test, write on the chart, say test, then I can test it. When the error is triggered, to clear the error, to go back to uh, to, to go back to step four to make the machine to run again. I will just trigger this switch, and then it will trigger this uh, reset command. This reset command it will reset the drive. So this is based like it's based on SDO. No, it's based on N, uh, NMT. So you are setting some service management uh, message to the slave. So this RSTD it will reset the drive, and the network will be normal. So once I connect the cable again, you see the error will be gone. I have to reset that everything will be okay. And finally, like I told us, in addition, there are some special registers and flag you could use as feedback in your machine. So this is very handy. If you need to get some feedback, what is happening, there's a lot of kind of registers that you can use. So like, for example, for slave one, slave two, slave three, slave four, is the server on? Is this drive enabled? Then you can read the status of this flag. And beside this, there are other parameters, index, I mean, indication, what you would like to know about the network, about your drive. So depending on the need of your machine, you can use one of these special register. So it's like a feedback to know what is happening in the machine. So there is quite a lot. So that is all we have for today. So you will receive this uh, presentation. You can go through this and make choice of what you will need. This is also for the inverter from station address 21. You have special register to monitor uh, the status, what is happening in the network, what is happening to the drive. So it's like a feedback, uh, a feedback loop system of what is happening on your machine. So that is all we have for today, this is our special register. So thank you for your patience. Thank you for waiting to the end. We so much appreciate you. Now we'll now give room for question and answers. If you have questions, please you can kindly ask your question. You can type your question, you can answer it verbal, you can ask it verbally if you have the possibility to talk. You mute your mic and then you ask your question. So we will share this uh, this uh, presentation with you. Also the project we have just we shared with you. And then also, if this video has been edited, yeah, if there is no issues, we could also publish it on YouTube, and then we could follow it uh, later. We can share it with our new customers that want to know how to use this mode. Do we have any question? Uh, if no question, I think my colleague, I will just invite my colleague, Joanne, to say one or two words. I, and I then... think, uh, sorry, Victor, I think Feli has something to ask. Okay. You're, you're mute, Feli. We cannot hear you. Uh, no, but I was asking as uh, you were published the, uh, the presentation, your presentation. I got the, I got the answer. Oh, the, the, the presentation, right? Okay, okay. You have got the answer. Yes, we are going to share it with you. We shared the presentation with you. We shared the project with you, the GI Designer project. Um, I hope if you don't have the designer, you can download it from our website, it's free. And then you can go through the steps of what we have made already. Yes. So that was it. Um, please uh, just hold on. When this meeting is ended, you will receive a survey. We please, we plead your indulgence to fill the survey. Be very candid, be sincere. It's anonymous, so we don't know who has filled, if we fill the survey. So that will help us to improve this training. So I will just invite my colleague, Joanne, maybe he has one or two things to tell us, and then we can end this meeting if there's no other question. Joanne, yeah. please. Yeah. You can on your video. Thanks, Victor. Yeah. I just want to, to thank you all for, for assisting to, to this uh, training. 
And just to, to let you know that we, uh, we are, uh, hope, uh, we will help you whatever you have any question or any have you need from, from our help, we will be eager to, to help you on that. So that's all from my side. I, yes, uh, I think most probably you will receive presentation and project by tomorrow, not today, but not, not later than tomorrow. That's all from my side. Thank you again for, to all of you. Okay, thank you all for connecting. Thank you for joining. We will not end the meeting. You will get a survey. So please just fill the survey and then we are so happy. So have a nice day. So bye, everyone. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye.